Good evening. Hello. My name is Kyle Doyle. I'm the manager of asset management at the Sunshine Coast Regional District. Uh, normally I like to let people settle in and, and file in late, um, but we've got a pretty good turnout here, so I'm just going to wait one more minute and then we'll get started with the presentation. Um, while we're waiting, I'll just go over some housekeeping real quick. Um, <clears throat> this session is being broadcast over both YouTube and Zoom. So if you're participating uh, live on YouTube or if you're watching it in the future, uh, thanks for joining us. I cannot uh, hear you or you can't, can't, can't participate the same as the Zoom participants. Um, if you're on Zoom this evening, you have two options to um, engage with us. Um, the first and preferable during the presentation is to have you use the Q&A bubble at the bottom of your screen. Um, it's right beside the chat and it's, it's a little bit different in that you can type a question into it and it will sit for staff to look at and we can type back a uh, response. At the end of the presentation, I will read out all the questions. So those of us on YouTube will be able to at least hear the questions and the answers. Um, the other way to participate is we'll have a question period at the end of the presentation. And if you want to raise your hand then, you can join us verbally and, and visually through video um, on Zoom here and, and pose your question and then we'll, we'll try to answer it live. Um, if you type into the chat during the presentation, there is a lot of us here today. Um, once I get into the presentation, I just have the one window. I might miss your question, so the best way to do it is either the question and answer or to raise your hand. Um, I'll try to do it in order as best I can, but if I get to the wrong order in the raising your hands, I'm going to apologize in advance right now. Uh, please have patience with us as we all adapt to this technology. Um, some introductions besides myself, we're joined by Cody Abbott, who is the utilities of um, uh, superintendent of utility operations at the Sunshine Coast. I always get that one wrong. And we're also joined by Director Pratt, um, who is the area representative for Area B. Um, I'm excited to have the turnout we have here today. So I will get started. Oh, it looks like the camera shifted. I'm going to share my screen and get a presentation going for you guys. So today's topic is the uh, capital funding update for the Secret Cove wastewater treatment area. Um, I think you all know the area, but just a refresher, what, inside the blue boundary on the screen in front of you is the uh, um, service area. If you don't reside in this area, you're welcome to, to stay and join us, but um, the topics we'll be talking about tonight are restricted to this service area specifically. Um, so we'd like you to keep the questions to that if possible. We're going to go over um, a summary of what we've talked about previously to make sure everyone's on the same page and we know where we're at. Uh, we'll talk about what we've done since we, we last uh, met and engaged, uh, an update on the capital funding situation uh, going forward. And then we'll talk about what's coming up next uh, briefly and broadly, and then we'll take some questions at the end. So previously, um, just a quick summary, we did a wastewater service review starting in early 2019 and this was a high level review of all 15 wastewater services within the Sunshine Coast Regional District. That was accompanied by um, asset management plans for every single wastewater service. These were service specific. Um, they collected all the information about the service and put it in one area including, uh, you know, the establishment date, the asset inventory the relevant bylaws and it, it allowed us to make a preliminary life cycle and operational cost analysis. Uh, that was followed up with community engagement where we probably saw you last winter. Um, we like to share what we found and we gathered some feedback from the residents. We tried to put out some fact sheets to keep everyone up to date on the, the complicated financial um, topic. And then we went to the board and <clears throat> the board um, was presented some budget models and they made a rate adjustment decision last year based on the information they were presented. Some of the key findings out of that 2019 wastewater service review were that the existing revenue is unsustainable 
Um, operations budgets were often greater than the revenues generated from the user fees, and this resulted in contributions to reserve funds being deferred frequently. We also found that future capital expenditures were not adequately planned for, and that the ratio of capital reserves to future capital expenses was too low. Um, for those of you that joined us, you may remember this uh, diagram. We had a system before where frontage fees, which were collected from every parcel in the service area, and user fees, uh, which were collected from every parcel connected to the wastewater service, uh, were combined to form an operating budget, and that was used to fund the annual expenditure uh, and also to contribute to capital and operating reserves. It's a little bit convoluted, and we thought something more transparent would be uh, preferable. So some of the key outcomes of this review were that we've decoupled the user fees and frontage fees such that user fee revenues only fund operation and maintenance and frontage fee revenues only fund um, capital expenses. Uh, the extensive review of operation and maintenance requirements, including an audit of operation and maintenance activities, resulted in a revised operation and maintenance budget to ensure adequate funding. We also established uh, minimum operation and maintenance reserve targets. This is an ongoing process that will be uh, reviewed annually to make sure that we're on point, but um, that, that was a, a good accomplishment. We also developed a capital funding model to help us to plan for future capital expenses, and that's kind of where we're going today. So what we have now is a more sustainable long-term funding model. This is one where user fees are used only for operations and maintenance and contribute to the operations and maintenance reserve. And frontage fees are only for capital expenditures and these contribute to the capital reserve. Common question we received previously was why do we need an operating reserve? Um, due to some of the, the nature of financing within a regional district, um, we're unable to borrow for operational expenses and unforeseen repairs can exceed the annual operating budget. So it's important we have funds in place to do the work we need to do so the service can continue. Um, it is important to note as well that operating reserves are withdrawn only for your service area um, and only for operating expenses. Coming out of last year's uh, service review, here's the financial impact on your wastewater rates that we saw. Um, the Secret Cove wastewater operations and maintenance budget was increased by 14%. And that resulted in a user fee increase of $173.86 from $412.50 to $586.36. There's also a one year operations and maintenance reserve contribution. Um, that's just to make sure we ha we reached that minimum reserve target. Secret Cove was pretty close last year, and so this was found to only be necessary for one year. The frontage fee did not change last year. So there's some new developments as we, we look to revise our capital funding model that we first initially presented. Um, we listened to some resident feedback. We heard we were too conservative. And as such, we looked at the uh, historical SCRD contract data to help us refine our long-term model. We reduced our engineering allowances by 3%. We reduced the contingency we thought was necessary by 15. Um, we also heard there was a higher tolerance for debt. So where possible, we considered financing larger portions of projects. And we also heard that the, um, uh, the uncertainty that was caused by this review about future financial rates and, and the impacts of that was causing some anxiety. And so we're looking to propose a five-year rate structure, which will allow residents to be aware of their rates for a five-year period. Um, this would be revised annually, ideally. As part of the annual review process, we've updated the savings and borrowing rates to match the current rates. We also introduced um, variable borrowing rates based on the expected term of the loan. This allowed us to um, look at the impact of, of a future loan being a 10-year loan or a 25-year loan and how that affected the capital model. Um, one of the main concerns we heard in the past was that our inflationary index was too high. Um, we went back through all the data we had um, and to try to reduce that number, we've introduced a variable construction cost index. And this is one that 
um, pegs the amount of time in the future the expected work is to occur with an inflation rate that matches the historical rate. Um, and that's just to reduce any inflationary effects that are unnecessary where possible. So just another reminder here, some of the limiting factors uh, or, or contributing factors to this uh, process. Um, the provincial legislation, specifically the Local Government Act, deems that when a regional district provides a service, only the service participants are allowed to be um, uh, taxed to fund it. Uh, revenue can only be collected by those who receive the service. This means for these small wastewater services, obviously, the costs are shared by a smaller number of people. Um, our infrastructure degrades over time. A lot of our infrastructure on the Sunshine Coast is um, you know, approaching 30, 40 plus years old. And so we see reduced performance and higher maintenance costs. And um, as time goes on, the cost to construct things increases. So infrastructure costs inflate over time. Uh, the method we took, just a broad kind of strokes uh, explanation on what we did to come up with this capital funding plan. We looked at the expenditures we had coming up. We developed a timeline of anticipated replacement using the estimated useful life of the infrastructure. Where possible, we used the most recent similar cost estimates. Um, we inflated the values to the future value using the construction cost indices that we showed before. Um, and then we included you know, where we anticipated borrowing money to complete the construction, we included debt financing costs. And on the other side of the ledger, as, as we anticipated a reserve to be built up, we applied the annual interest that would be accrued from that. In order to reduce the um, effect of the inflationary values we're seeing, uh, we've used the most re recent replacement cost estimates. So if we have a um, system that we've replaced recently that is similar in size, we would use that construction cost estimate to give us a more accurate idea. Um, these are all still just estimates though. And um, when we talk about useful life of the infrastructure, just a reminder, there are three main components in your wastewater service and, and their lifespans are quite long. 50 years for a treatment plant, 40 years for a disposal system, and 80 years for the collection system. Um, this means that when we look at a capital model, if our window of, of uh, study is too small, we're not going to pick up um, certain components um, and then you know, we'll, we'll not plan to have enough finances to replace them. So with that in mind, we um, looked at three different windows when we were considering the construction of these models. The first is a 30-year window, and that's what you see on your screen now. In the next 30 years, Secret Cove is anticipated to need outfall anchors and a treatment plant. So based on the historical rate increase, since the SCRD has operated the um, Secret Cove wastewater service, uh, there's been a 22 cent a year average increase. I believe that's from the original um, French fee that was charged to the one today across the total number of years that uh, we've been operating the service. What you can see on your screen now is the uh, gray line that tracks along the bottom, and that's the reserve balance. And if we look across the next 30 years, the reserve is probably enough to uh, fund the, a significant portion of the um, outfall anchors coming up in the next five years, but it doesn't even blip when it comes to the treatment plant. And so what that means is when we get to the uh, time to replace the treatment plant, we're going to see a large step up in the frontage fee that's necessitated because of debt that would be incurred um, by building this plant. So if we increase at the same rate, we have a small jump here where we're likely incurring some debt for the outfall anchors. And then we have a $1,560 jump in 2029 uh, to accommodate the debt. And at that point, we're still not you know, accumulating any reserve balance during that time. So in the next 30 years, it doesn't look like what we're doing now is sufficient. Um, we have this large fee increase due to a loan payment. And if we back that window out to a 50-year window, we see we have a pretty large cost coming up here. Um, what this is, is an um, out ocean outfall, 
and it's the collection system for the Secret Cove uh, Wastewater Service Area. I believe that ocean outfall cost is anticipated to be shared with Jolly Roger. Um, if we go along the historical rates, what we've done here is we've continued at a 2% increase and we still see a large jump in, in anticipated fees coming up in 2065. These sort of jumps are um, considered inequitable to future rate payers as they bear the majority of the costs and the debt. Um, if we start looking at you know, a larger 75 year window, we start picking up some real large costs. Um, there is a point where we have to be uh, reasonable about what we can expect, whether it's future technology or um, you know, the, the demographics of the area. So I don't want to consider too far of planning, um, but it's important to be aware of these costs that we are anticipating. So what we have up on the screen now is the plan we discussed last year when we, when we first met, basically. Um, what has changed is in 2060, um, 2063 here, um, originally, I don't think we considered the collection system as part of the responsibility of the SCRD uh, with some discussions with the strata and whatnot. Uh, we, we are just considering it for now um, as one of the SCRD's uh, responsibilities to replace. So it has added to this cost. Um, the plan that we talked about last year was an aggressive plan and the goal was to accumulate reserve and pay off uh, minimal debt. That was the original plan we felt would be um, shared by the residents. Uh, in this situation, there would be a $200 a year increase from 2020 to 2029 and a 2% increase after that. You can see, I've highlighted here on the screen, um, there is a, a small jump here due to uh, some debt financing, but it's, it's similar in line to the $200 a year increase. And I think what you'll, you'll notice, one of the challenges with Secret Cove and having this upcoming infrastructure in uh, 2029, 2030 with this treatment plant is that it's, it is a fairly large expense coming up soon. And so um, in this scenario, we consider paying off the debt for this in 10 years to allow us to accrue as much um, reserve as possible for future construction. This is the most conservative scenario um, and, and the, the safest from a financial perspective. What I'm gonna add to the screen now is the reserve balance we anticipate over the next 50 years using this. Um, you see you would, it, it, it is difficult to, to accumulate much reserve for the upcoming infrastructure. Um, and we have a 10 year period of debt repayment where we're not building much reserve. And then the reserve continues to build um, up to about 80, 85% of the upcoming um, infrastructure in 2064, 2065. 2% annual increase is a target amount based on uh, CPI, the uh, Consumer Price Index. So by, by using a 2% annual increase, it's considered uh, to maintain a, a match to inflationary rates. So this is um, the first plan we looked at. And the next one we look at is a little bit um, less aggressive in the beginning. We go $100 a year from 2020 to 2029. Um, and we accumulate uh, or we come up to a, a small debt driven f increase here um, and then from there we increase at three percent uh, we chose three percent just to reflect that uh, you're, you're going to encounter a situation here because in this scenario we don't accumulate much of a reserve this is a 20-year finance debt um, and so we're anticipating a large spike in frontage fees when, when this cost comes up here it's not ideal, but it, it definitely puts us in a better situation than the current plan does. Um, and, and this allows maybe a bit more risk um, if, if you're optimistic about future cost of infrastructure and the ability to get grants or something like that. So the third plan we looked at was a very um, mo modest increase for the next 10 years. $50 a year and 2% beyond. Um, we see about a thousand dollar increase in 2029 when we have debt payment. Um, this is a 20 year loan we anticipate as well. Um, and a similar story as before where we aren't able to accumulate much of a reserve heading into the 
the large cost in the 2060s. Finally, um, one of the conversations we had before is, is the possibility of a grant. Um, I think Secret Cove is one of the, the facilities that is, is likely to receive a grant. It has uh, an immediate need, and this is becoming more and more um, of a topic that, that you know, the federal and the provincial government is aware of. Um, so in the near future, grants are likely more likely to be available. So we modeled a situation here where we followed Plan 1 from 2020 to 2027. And we assume that by 2027, we've applied for a grant, we've got a feasibility study and a design plan, and we receive a 30% grant for the treatment plant in 2029. Under this model, you can see that um, there are fee increases stop at $1,502, they increase at 2%, and um, this is quite a healthy situation. Having a grant um, for this first large infrastructure cost here in 2029 will give us a lot more flexibility in what we can do with our financing. So it's something that we plan on pursuing quite aggressively. However, there is no certainty um, that there will be grants available. So this slide here just kind of reiterates that effect of a grant on the 50 year frontage fee. And you can just see the green scenario is, is scenario one and the purple uh, line is the frontage fee under the scenario where we get a 30% grant. Um, obviously, it's a it's a massive um, relief financially for residents, and so that's something that we will definitely pursue. This is a little bit of a messy graph. Um, I put it up there just so you can see the comparison visually of the uh, historical frontage fee in your yellow. Um, the brown would be the uh, $50 a year plan, um, the blue the 100 and the green the 200. Um, what I think is pertinent about this um, is that we understand kind of this range here is, is the um, cost it is going to cost us to finance the, um, the treatment plant. So, you know, we can, we can come up here, here, here. No matter how we approach this, if we don't um, collect enough reserves, there's going to be a jump here uh, in order to finance a treatment plant. And this, this jump can be moderated by extending the term of the loan that we, you know, pursue to finance it, uh, extending that to be a 20-year loan, but then we don't build reserve balances maybe as fast as we like, and that creates a future problem. So um, there is a challenge ahead of us is that we have an upcoming infrastructure replacement. One more scenario. Oh, I have to do here. So, <clears throat> I just want to talk about the five year rate structure. Um, the purpose of this is to provide some certainty um, for both residents and those making the financial plans. Um, so, we're looking at a five year rate structure. The three plans we talked about, not including the scenario where we receive a grant, are put on the screen ahead of you in, in this table. So, in the left column is the user fee. That's obviously subject to an annual review. Um, it may go up or down depending on what we see. I, I think it'll remain flat, so I've left it as such. Um, we have an operation and maintenance reserve contribution. That should be over after this year. And then we have the three plans, frontage fees in bold, total cost in um, the same color but not bold. And what you can see uh, there is just an idea of what we'd present to you if, if we go forward with this. And because it's a five-year plan, I just, um, I know that some of the residents has, have talked about the inflationary rates being too high, and I've, I've tried to find um, information to support bringing them down, but we're just using the data we have. But in this scenario here, I've, I've assumed a 3% uh, construction inflation rate for the um, infrastructure far in the future, which is, you know, it's a significant reduction in the cost anticipated there. Um, and then I've charted on the screen plan one, if we had go for five years and then stop at 2%, what would happen? Um, what you can see is the near-term effects are still pretty similar. We're, um, 
we still have this debt financing cost that's going to be required. Um, and we'll have to have a 2% increase from here. So uh, my point being that the next 10 years are, are pretty critical and, and the decision we go, um, we'll decide what happens with this jump right here. Uh, so we have considered this um, possibility that it, it is a, a lower inflationary rate than what the data shows us right now. But um, regardless, it still, it still has this, this large infrastructure cost, the treatment plant, um, that, that dictates what we need to spend the next few years on. Um, even if this is uh, a 3% inflationary rate, it, it is important that we start raising uh, infrastructure costs, um, revenue costs now, to prevent an unfair jump in values, um, a sudden jump in values in, in the near future. So, some upcoming work. Uh, we're going to finalize this capital funding model. We're going to review our work, cross our T's, dot our I's, that sort of thing. Make sure that we didn't um, transpose any digits. Uh, we're going to continue to pursue grant opportunities. Right now, we are um, we should be finding out next month if we've received a grant for the feasibility study uh, for the Secret Cove Marina, which would allow us to um, better plan the future, especially with this replacement coming up. Um, we're going to present a five-year rate structure to the board for their consideration hopefully provide residents with at least some near-term rate certainty. And then on an annual basis, we'll be reviewing the operations and maintenance budget and um, uh, ensuring that there's an appropriate operating reserve. The conclusion I have is that, you know, we're in a, a situation now where the current rates are not financially sustainable. Uh, there are multiple ways to finance the 50-year capital expenditures, and it, um, there are a lot of variables that, that you know, change the outcomes. Um, but we have a, a, a very d acute problem in the near future that we have to be aware of. Uh, and by conducting an annual review, we'll ensure that we're maintaining the up-to-date information, such as cost estimates uh, and, and the current situation with the reserves and, and the rates. So at this time, I'm going to go to questions. Um, if you have any questions after the presentation, uh, you can check out the website. Uh, www.secretcove.scrd.ca front slash secret dash cove uh, or scrd.ca front slash wastewater. If you're on YouTube and you have any questions, please send an email to info at scrd.ca or if you have questions at a later date, um, sometimes when I sleep on things, I have the best ideas, um, please contact us and let us know. Um, I have a few questions in the queue right now. I'm going to see what we got. Um, so we've got a question from Tammy um, asking about uh, several things. I'll start with uh, what years in the last 40 years did the operating budget exceed monies collected? Um, I don't have that information right in front of me. Um, I will write this down. And if maybe you contact me on email, I can uh, try to get you that information. Um, the next question you had was when the outfall was broken, this could this have been covered by insurance? Um, I haven't fully reviewed the process. I assume that if it was possible, it would have been done. Um, sometimes, you know, I'm sure you can relate to with your automobile. If you have a small fender bender, it might be better to uh, pay for the repair rather than the increase in um, uh, coverage fees. So when you consider the regional district as a whole, um, it, it's not as simple as, as um, it may initially appear. I, I am not super familiar with the situation. I wasn't here at the time, so I can't speak directly to that. Um, and then finally, could you publish annual operating costs as they used to be? And um, that is something that we're looking to do. Um, I, I brought it up before and we'll continue to work towards that. Um, the first I heard of it was in December or um, January we met last year. And I think it's a great idea. The transparency, um, of, of course, I think it should be available for you. So we'll definitely be working towards that. Um, the next question is, how do you arrive at $5 million? Maybe upgrades may be possible for much less. Um, I agree, Tammy. Um, when you're looking at funding, capital planning, um, you know we don't have an engineer's estimate in front of us because that costs money to get. Um, what we've done is we've taken historical costs for this work and we've inflated them with the construction cost inflation index. Um, there, there is um, 
an argument to be made that future work in the ocean might be much, much more expensive than $5 million. Um, your outfall extends beyond the island out into the um, entrance to Secret Cove. So it's, it's quite a bit of infrastructure underwater, um, which presents unique challenges. There's only certain contractors that do the work. Um, so uh, the way we've got to 5 million was taking the costs uh, estimates we have most recently and inflating them um, using the rate of inflation that we found from uh, regional cost indices uh, for Vancouver. So um, it may be possible for much less and it's something that we'll be continuing to look at when we have work done or have other municipalities to get work done and we're able to get uh, a more recent cost estimate or an idea of how much that work will cost, we will update this information wherever possible. Um, so let me get the next one. Hmm. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to raise your hand or type them in the question and answer there. So we've asked a question here, uh, cost sharing. Um, I mentioned cost sharing with the Jolly Roger. How would that cost split present itself? In our preliminary analysis, we've assumed a 50-50 um, split. That's obviously um, something that would need to be formalized and, and agreed upon in the future. But I think as far as a, a reasonable estimate at this time, 50-50 would be um, understandable. Um, the next question we have is, is it possible to consider pumping up to a septic field somewhere? Uh, that I, I believe so. Um, the, there are some logistical challenges. Obviously, we need land um, available nearby, um, and we need um, an engineer to tell us <coughs> sort of the requirements that would be um, needed to make that happen. So it's not impossible, but I don't know if it's the most cost-efficient uh, solution at this time. Um, pumps introduce their own challenges as you have more and more pumps. Anytime someone misuses their septic system, it can cause the pump to fail, and then uh, we need to have a call out and your operating costs go up, so. Um, I hope that answers your question. And um, I'm sorry, Bob, I will give credit to you for the questions previously asked by Tammy. Good and fair questions. Obviously, I, I appreciate that this is a lot of information. Um, and if you need time to process it, if you want to see it again, it is recorded on YouTube. You can find the link on the website there. Um, I'm happy to answer questions via email or go over um, any of this in, in more depth if you need. As we go through uh, this process, you know, we, we will be coming out and talking to you more and more. This is the start of the process and, and I think it's important to realize that um, we're not looking for a commitment for a 50-year plan, we're just kind of raising awareness of what's coming up in the next 50 years. We're hoping to have uh, the next five years planned for the benefit of both staff planning this um, financial expenditures coming up and for the residents to just be aware of, of what costs they can expect. So. Um, I will uh, type this one. The SCRD website is www.scrd.ca front slash secret dash cove. Um, and you can also go to www.scrd.ca front slash wastewater and it has all 15 of our wastewater services linked there and you can find some more information perhaps. I have two glasses of water, so I, I'm here all night if anyone has any more questions. But if we don't get um, you know, enough questions, I will, I will shut her down. Jane, Jane has asked, uh, will the feasibility study um, include potential joint facility with Jolly Roger? What if facility cannot be replaced in current location? 
can we have another meeting to discuss the engineer and study results? Um, it, I would ideally like to have um, a consultant take on the feasibility study that does give consideration to a joint facility with Jolly Roger. Uh, there are challenges as far as the logistics with budgets. Um, if we get a grant for Secret Cove, but not for Jolly Roger, do we, um, uh, do we, do we force Jolly Roger to participate at full cost? Well, Joel Secret Cove is subsidized by say 75% or vice versa. Um, so I, I don't want to promise that, but we will definitely look at it. Um, if the facility cannot be replaced in a current location, I mean, that's a, that's a, a hurdle that we'll have to um, overcome when we get there. Um, ideally, um, our feasibility study will tell us the potential challenges and allow us to identify what information we need to clarify. Um, and of course, when we when we have the feasibility study received, um, I'd, I'd gladly put together a meeting with Secret Cove residents to discuss what we found out, and then you know obviously chart the uh, more clear path forward. Um, so I hope that answers your questions, Jane. Um, I will post the PowerPoint to the SRD website. I can do that. I haven't in the past. I because there's some animations. I, I think it looks cheesy to have the overlay graphics, um, but I, I can do that. I had originally intended to have these posted up on the website before um, the presentation date, but it's been a really busy summer, and, and I'm sorry I overpromised and underdelivered on that one. So. What I'll do is I will put the PowerPoints up as PDFs on the website. I need to have someone more technically competent than me um, do that part of it, but I, I will provide the PowerPoints to someone to do that. Um, you're welcome. As far as an alternative waste system, um, I think that's where we need to, to really rely on the professionals. Um, there are a lot of a lot of new technologies coming out here, and uh, maybe our feasibility study. I don't want to get our hopes up, but maybe our feasibility study tells us we have 20 more years in the treatment system, and uh, you know maybe in the next 20 years we get a really good cheap technology. There's there's a lot of unknowns and uncertainties, but um, we we will you know ask our engineers when when we get them um, to to tell us what the what the best options are. Um, you know, Secret Cove does have some unique challenges with its um, its steep slopes and all that. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll get there. Oh, of course, I've completely forgotten, Jane. I apologize. Um, I normally have the the IT guys set a poll up, and I don't seem to have it here. Let me see if I can get it on down. Bear with me for a second. Normally, I put a poll up and ask um, residents which option they prefer, and we have such a great turnout. I'd love to use that. Let me see if I can figure this out. Bear with me for a quick second. seem to have the capacity to do that. I'm sorry. Um. No, I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, I <coughs> unfortunately, we don't have the poll option up this evening. We have, um, I, I haven't been able to see the whole time because when I when I close my window and I share my screen, but at this time we have 13. I think we may have had 15 uh, residents at one time, so we've had a very good turnout this evening. Um, so Jane asks, will the SCRD be adopting the same funding strategy for all areas or for each facility? Um, because of the, the variety in uh, the ages of the facilities, there's different challenges at each one. Um, some facilities have um, a large facility designed for you know 20, 30, 40 lots, and they have 5, 10, 15 people um, residing there, so they have operational deficits um, to consider. Um, some facilities like yours have uh, have more aged infrastructure and, and a less developed reserve fund, and so they're looking at a, a large cost coming up. It's, it's unique to each each facility, um, but the idea is to you know, try to apply our financial policy to all the um, services here on the SCRD. 
and uh, our financial policy is, is looking to promote equity and maintain a, a level of service um, for the ongoing future. So where, where we can, we're looking to um, uh, apply similar finance strategies for all areas, yes. Um, if the future capital expenditure exceeds the fund, will resident, I'm assuming you mean if we collect too much reserves, will uh, we be refunded in excess? I think the point of the, um, of the annual review process is to just keep a good handle on where we're at. And um, if we need to make course corrections by slight amounts, it's easier to do than drastic course corrections. So um, the idea is to prevent a situation where we're collecting more revenue than we need. Um, but if, if in, in any scenario that did happen, um, there are um, rules written into the bylaws about how some reserve funds can be used to mitigate um, fees, which is basically a refunded excess for the, for the residents. Um, that's not ideal either. I mean, that's inequitable in the sense that past owners are then contributing more than necessary. So that's definitely a situation we're not looking to get into. These are been great questions, and I really appreciate everyone's engagement tonight. So thank you for um, finding time to join us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll give it another five more minutes in case anyone has questions, but feel free to filter out as, as you feel fit. Um, I'll be here until the, um, at least uh, 7.45. I'm happy to stay longer if there's more questions. But I also don't want to keep people just watching me sit in the boardroom. So uh, I've had three quick questions here. Um, the first is, when will the next meeting opportunity to review the next steps be? Um, at this point, there's there's no engagement sessions planned um, in the immediate future. Um, I, it is difficult to find time to do 15 of these sessions. Um, this, this started in August and is continuing through October every two days for, for staff and board members. Um, and so likely the next time this topic will come up will be a, a board meeting um, I've been trying to communicate with residents as best I can and, and develop mailing lists to allow people to uh, be aware of these when they come up. But the best way um, is to watch the SCRD's um, social media accounts. They'll, they'll make a, a special announcement when something on wastewater is coming up on a, a topic. Um, and then you can dive into that there. Um, or just email us and ask, is this relevant to my uh, service area, if you'd rather do it that way. Um, so. I don't have a specific date um, when the next meeting will be, and we will try to post them on the SCRD's wastewater website as well, now that we've got a good handle on, on post information there. So um, budget time, this will likely be a topic during budget time, um, if, if I was gonna guess on the next meeting. Um, the Strata would like in writing SCRD position regarding collection system ASAP. Um, yeah, we, we will um, we'll continue to look to refine that. It's been um, it's been on the books for sure. And thank you, thank you for the um, comments.
So one of the questions is, uh, compared to the 2019 review, do you have an idea of approximately how much cost may be affected as a percentage? Um, in the, if I look at the, um, I could share this screen again, actually. Uh, when I look at what happened in 2019, we had a, um, let's go backwards frantically here, uh, $173 increase in user fees and a $30 um, increase that was due to a one-time operation and maintenance reserve contribution. So <clears throat> I would expect the increase uh, next year, depending on what the board decides the best path forward, would be between $200 and $50 um, based on the, the plans we talked about tonight. So a sim similar amount as last year um, to, to about a quarter, depending, would be the answer to that. I'm asked, um, I'm assuming this is for me as I've been answering all the questions, but what is your gut feeling as to the option the SCRD will approve? I don't, I don't bet. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. It, it is a very difficult situation. Uh, Lori's going to have to join the rest of the board and um, uh, discuss this in depth and, and look over the numbers and go over the feedback and balance what is best for um, you know, the residents and what's, um, what's best for the, the infrastructure, I suppose. It's, it is a difficult situation. Um, I, I should mention um, that we've lost half our audience. Um, that we have been looking at options to make this easier on, on senior citizens and people with um, sing, single incomes, uh, or sorry, s s set incomes. There is a... Um, a different way to structure the, the taxes. Um, it's a complicated process. The initial review of it um, hasn't yielded any certain path forward, and so um, I'm hesitant to, to get too optimistic about it, but um, we're doing what we can to make this uh, as you know palatable as possible for the residents. And I, I don't know what the SCRD will prove. Maybe, Lori, if you wanted to... <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm, I'm certainly. Oh, oh, there's, there's a, bit a bit of an echo there. there. Try that again. I have to turn off the boardroom mic rooms every time you talk. So. Okay. Well, then I will talk quickly so you can turn it back on. Uh, so, uh, in an answer to uh, Jane and to your question, um, I do know. Uh, each one of the uh, board members, we're listening very carefully to each, uh, to all the residents that are affected in these areas. Uh, that's why we asked staff uh, after we had done, after staff had done the initial uh, presentations last year and we heard very clearly from the community that they wanted more information. That's why we asked staff to continue um, with uh, uh, community engagement. Uh, we are very definitely listening, uh, so I can't, uh, uh, we're going to wait and see uh, when all of these are done and we'll talk about it and I'll know, um, I can tell you my, my personal view is until we're at the table and we're discussing it, I haven't made up my mind yet, uh, so I think it's really important that um, once you have all the information and if you have feedback on that, that you present it forward and uh, just to make sure that we can hear everyone's voice. So um, thank you so much for the engagement tonight. I think it's fantastic that there were so many people at this meeting. Um, Kyle, I'll mute myself so you can unmute you. Thanks, thanks, Larry, I appreciate it. Um, and that's a, a great point. Until, until it's on the table, um, yeah, decision's not made, I suppose. I appreciate that. Um, 
The next question we've received is from Deb. It's, um, are the, the options you've outlined tonight the same as those in the two-page document? Um, no, it's, um, they're not. We've, um, we've revised our, our information quite a bit. We've changed our, um, our models and uh, uh, the, the most recent information is not yet posted um, in, in document form on the websites, but as we discussed earlier, um, I will look to put it, this presentation in as a PDF on the website so you can review this uh, in, at your own pace. Um, great questions so far. Thank you to everyone for coming. Uh, we're, we're approaching an hour here, so I'm going to get ready to shut her down unless anyone else has any questions. Um, it's almost time to switch to red wine for me. Okay, I'm going to shut off YouTube now. Goodbye to everyone out in the YouTube.